This was all pitch. Hello! Welcome to Stitch and Soda! This is what are they? And how do they? I hear you thinking. Well, they are a bunch of dead devil little fellows who will stop at nothing to win. Why, what and win who, you say? Well, win anything. They are just very competitive. From sea eating, to spring juggling, dancing to death, diving. These little the fellows, fellows will compete in anything. Fifty-two of these talented Stitch and Warriors are selected each week to battle in out. How and where you cry? They are by their nature so excitable and ferocious. They are stored in heavily fortified crates, ready to be released for action. As and when they are called upon, let's speak one now! Oh! Ah, it's Drang! A fine stitch up warrior. Here is that. Strength! Two. Oh, my life's not very impressive. Height! Nine! Oh, that's Kitty. Actual height! One! My hat's not tall on the table. Now oh, that's very good! For a short house! Seven! Stupidity! Ten! Hey, you really are an idiot! Let's see how he likes to win! Drang, do you want to win prize? Do you? Good! Now this is going to be too easy now. To win great big shiny trophy, all you have to do is eat something disgusting. Really? Yes? This will be good, what are you going to come back with? Something mini, like a uh, sprout sundae, a bug burger, or maybe a pair of grannies with a big pack. Oof, that's better. Here he is. What have you there? Mama's homemade strawberry jam. Oh, that is drag. Why are you such a loser? You're stupid, lazy, stumpy man. Jam is tasty preserved. That's not disgusting at all. Oh, I'm so sorry, everyone. He really let us down. Hey, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What's this? What's happening? What are those things? So uh, that sort of thing shows uh, broadcaster instantly, they kind of know what they're going to get, um, or at least to some degree. So they, they've seen an example of how the animation looks, how one character works, and they can kind of, from there, perceive how a show might be formed. Um, just so you can see the sort of process of for making that sort of thing, I'm just going to take you through some steps really quickly. Uh, firstly, modelling. So we model in Maya, and it looks <coughs> as simple as that. Um, gradually, you'll see um, it become smooth and textured. Um, when we were pitching in the show, we um, wanted to do it so there are 52 characters, like a Royal Rumble of wrestling, so there are 52 characters and they gradually get eliminated in more and more silly ways. Eventually, they told us we had to do it as a shorts program, so it meant we ended up having to do very short gags. Uh, by the nature of short gags, you have to make them more dramatic, dramatic and more impactful, so we went really, really gross and stupid, which is why they ended up getting banned in America. They literally couldn't show a single one. They showed them in the UK because you guys can handle it, apparently. They can't in America. Um, so that's, uh, that's the modeling stage, as you saw there. Um, textures, so we had to keep them as simple as possible. So even though the character looks quite detailed, that is the whole of a texture map, which we wrap around that sort of character you saw earlier. So it looks sort of fairly simple there. And then for the other character, which was kind of a hybrid of uh, the one you saw earlier, um, that's the texture map for here. Now, to make things really realistic, we had to work on systems that when things pulled, so I'm going to show you on the arm, that the wool actually stretched with it, uh, and it kept sort of the volume thinned out. Um, that was one of the hardest things to do with these characters, especially as we rip them further and further apart in different shows. Um, but that's how that worked. So now the important bit, when you're, um, if you're going to enter the shorts program, we're coming with animation, the storyboard, I'm going to sort of flick through it with you, with some theme tune going on the uh, So there we have it, top of his little ramp, uh, looking down, big ramps and buses. Uh, who's this? What's he up to? He's got his little box. Uh oh, he's putting some hedgehogs on the ramp. Puts his helmet on. You should know what's happening without me commentating, that's just a rubbish storyboard, I don't know what I'm doing. 
accelerate in. It was the hedgehog. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's our storyboard. This is how they look when they're just panels not put in. Now, we're, we're lucky because we were choosing this on our own, so the director, producer, everyone was sat in the same room. So we didn't really fill these in, we just talked to each other at a meeting. If you're pitching into Nickelodeon, you'll need to have more detailed action, what's happening in case they don't get it, more detailed dialogue, and then any sort of extra notes you want down here. So um, we put a few notes in, but not too many. I'm just gonna flick through these quickly. Um, storyboards, you, in, in this instance, if you're pitching in a show, you need to make them so that you can understand what's going on and the characters look recognizable. But we've had, when we work for Nickelodeon, we've had people draw storyboards in sort of stick map form. So yeah, just as long as it's understandable, you don't have to be the best drawer in the world. It really helps. And I always tell everyone, if you can draw well and you can storyboard, it doesn't matter what's going on in the industry, you will always have a job. They need storyboards for things even like EastEnders, for, for everything they need storyboards. So if you can draw well and you can storyboard, you will have a job for life. And at the moment, because there's a shortage, supply and demand, they're getting paid really well. So it would be a good job for life as well. Uh, so next stage, um, the animation. We actually skip a stage here. The first stage of animation would be uh, block out. So it would be the character in sort of key poses like you would used to have done with 2D. So big pose here, big pose there, and then we'd smooth in between. That was quite camp, wasn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, so we do it so we look really blocky, like a robot moving. We correct things at that stage. And then once we've done that stage, we get on to this stage, which is the basic animation um, with no textures and no sound. And only, I've got a few stages, so I'll only play a bit of each one. You can see I'm legging it in the background of the um, So that's how it looks like that. Then the next stage we add on is uh, the light and render. So this is pretty much what's directly churned out of uh, Maya. So it's just when we hit go, this is what comes out the other end. So already a massive improvement. But every bit of extra time you spend on it, um, the incremental improvements get smaller and smaller and you spend more money, which is, if you think of uh, uh, Disney or Pixar films, it's in getting it to such a high quality that costs the money. They could do something that was good for half the money, it's getting it to that really high quality. So, I mean, we could have put something like, oh, this, this was bearing mind this was nine years ago, it would have looked perfectly fine on television. Um, but then we move on to the next day, so the comping and grading, so we change the grade, we add in smoke, we add in all sorts of effects, and it just lifts the level a little bit more. Okay, so that's how it's a little bit better, and then music and effects are added. This is the one, uh, I'll show you this one, this is the one that most offended uh, the Americans. <laughs>
talk. Seems to be a nice blank slide. Okay, this is something else um, we're doing at the moment with uh, people from our studio. To keep them interested, we allow everyone to pitch ideas for shorts, and then three times a year they get to make exactly what they want. So this was uh, <coughs> this was uh, the Christmas short that we just gave about five people uh, time to produce in our studio. We can't pay people as much as they get in film for obvious reasons. Film a lot more money, but this is the way we try and hold on to our staff by giving them opportunities to make their own thing. So we run that, we run competitions like that three times a year for our staff. Um, as I say, if we don't do stuff like that, they would leave and go to film. Other things we do to try and uh, make them feel welcome. In film, you pretty much have to work 24-7, so we try and do a good sort of nine to five work ethic like you should. We also, if you're with us for a number of years, we do profit share, so um, our company doesn't have like big bosses and shareholders that sit above us, we're the company. So if uh, you work for us for three years, then any money we make gets shared out amongst everyone, which means people want to work harder because they think they'll make better work or make more money, and they will uh, get a share of that, which is nice. This is a new show for you, about to start work on. Oh, what's wrong? It's raining, I don't like rain. Oh dear. Do you know what I do when it's raining? No. I like jumping in puddles. Puddles? Yes. Why don't you give it a go? Oh. Splish! <laughs> Isn't it fun? <laughs> That's uh, the latest show. Uh, my colleagues got to go to Amsterdam today to talk to me. Own the book right out there. Well, I come here, so you should all be very grateful. I'm not in Amsterdam. I should be grateful as well. Uh, so uh, it's great that we get opportunities to make stuff like that, and we get to use our families. So the little voice you heard there is my um, colleague's uh, little boy, who he just uh, tickled for about an hour to get the right sound effects. Um, animation uh, as a job. It's really fun, it is just drawing, but as I say, you can only do it if you're really committed and work really hard. One of the main problems in the industry at the moment is there's always people willing to work harder than you, and because it's a creative industry, they're sometimes willing to work cheaper than you just to get a job on a roll. So there's big problems at the moment with uh, other countries undercutting us, and also all of us internally um, within England trying to sort of undercut each other. But there is a good vibe in the industry, and things are getting better with the tax break. 
Um, even at university, when I was at university, um, computers were a lot more expensive, so we had one computer between two because we needed to render stuff off. Uh, if you left your computer, the other guy would come on, log you out, and start working. So we got into this routine by the final year that we would um, eat, literally eat, uh, drink, sleep our computers. We, a couple of people actually moved beds in to buy the side computers and large cans of Red Bull. Um, eventually the university had to shut the lab down to have hygienists go and clean it all out while we all sat outside or wait until we could run back in and get back on our computer. Things are a bit better now as computers and software are cheaper so you know you can run all that software off pretty any, any computer you'll have now. Um, if you can't run off your computer they're doing um, cloud versions so you can do it, you can literally do it off any computer. Um, it's a really great industry to be involved with. It's uh, really friendly, um, especially if it's a very small industry. So when I've done the most recent survey uh, to work out what all the companies in the UK are working on, I think you, especially on the children's side or on the uh, production side of producing series, there's only about 60 companies. So everybody knows everyone. Um, uh, there is a downside to that. In an industry where everyone knows everyone, if you do one bad bit of work, or you do one thing to annoy anybody, then everyone knows about it. So I've seen companies uh, make one mistake and that's pretty much the end of them. Um, so you just keep having to produce constantly uh, imaginative, creative and top quality work and then people will come back to you. We are absolutely rubbish off the hand at promoting ourselves. People have told us that. We're very bad at promoting ourselves. We're very bad at selling our own shows. We now get Ardman to sell our shows for us because we're so poor. We just kind of go, this is our show, it's brilliant. Whereas um, I'm sure someone just sold me a car this morning. I don't know how, they, they sold me it and I paid more than I wanted to for it. So some people are just naturally good at selling, so we let them do that. But we're just um, always trying to push the quality of our work and then hopefully that shines through. Uh, so word of mouth is very, very important to all of you. Also very important to all of you is get some work experience if you can. It's really, really difficult to do that in any meaningful way, but, but keep trying. It's easier to do it if you've got a friend of a friend that knows someone. I got in a, um, a company called Tandem when I was 15, and that really helped me. Got on the CV, helped me get into university. Um, any experience you can get is going to stand you in better eyes when, um, when we uh, come to look at your stuff. I know as students you probably want to be really creative and make um, amazing artistic art pieces if you are doing a college or university course. All of us in our year made that mistake. I did uh, about, I think it was a 21 minute piece of animation that was uh, continually uh, sort of abstract version of uh, cubism, cubism paintings that no one understood apart from me. Did that help me get a job in the industry? No, it didn't. Everyone looked at it and was like, what is that? The easiest way to get a job in the animation industry is to take the simplest figure you can, a stick man, um, uh, stick man maybe with some uh, facial expressions and just do three really nice bits of animation a nice walk cycle, jump cycle and picking a box up if that looks perfect then we'll give you a job whether you've come out of uh, you know, a college or a university it really is that simple we don't expect to see flash renders we have a room, a room full of geeks who make stuff look like this but if you want a job as an animator animator then, um, then just really learn how to do the basics really well um, if you want to go down the lighting and rendering side, then it's a good idea to be doing some sort of maths or physics modules if you're going to university or if you've got choices now. Um, if you're looking to get into directing stuff, which is I think the dream for anyone initially, if you're looking to get into directing stuff, you really do need to work your way up. I mean, even within our company, we didn't direct any stuff to start off with, people directed us. You learn from other people and then eventually, when you've got some experience, you maybe become an animation director or an animation lead, then an animation director and then a director. You can't just go out there and say, I'm an animation director, no one, no one will buy that, so you have to work your way up. I would even say, I'm not particularly, I've been for years, I'm not particularly good animation director. You still have to have that sort of um, patience and you have to be able to see a project through. The guy who does all this stuff for us, Adam Shaw, is the kind of guy that can sit down in the morning um, and just sit in his desk all day, get up at the end and leave without having a break and having worked all day. Um, I'm, I guess I'm more of a creative, so I get down, uh, have a cup of coffee, check my emails, look at Facebook, do a doodle, do some work, check Facebook, get a coffee, do some doodles, wander around the office. 
very, very, very occasionally come up with a good idea. And once you've got that good idea, then it's trying to get people around you to carry out those good ideas. So it takes absolutely all sorts, from people who are literally just creatives through to complete science geeks to make this work. Well, um, it is a great, great industry to be involved with. And as I say, there are tons and tons of opportunities now for everyone wanting to get into it. So I highly recommend you all do animate. Stop what you're doing now and uh, do animation. Whatever you're doing, drop out all your courses, what we're doing, do animation. But um, thanks for your time today. What I've got here, for anyone that might be interested in entering uh, animated shorts, I've got the Bible that we did for Stitch Up. It's too complicated for what you need, but it will show you, if you go on the Nickelodeon website, you can cross compare what we've written against um, what they want, and you can see which bits you will need to do. Um, I've also, if anyone's interested, straight after, just got an example of the sort of other Bibles that people have done for other things when they're trying to sell them. Um, I don't know if I'm under time or over time. Still got more if you want. It's quarter past two. Quarter past two. It's 20 past, and it's Friday, and it's Sunday.